This is Rogers TV. Interest payments were going up. Creditors were calling. I finally realized I needed help. The people at Jane's and Knows really really took care of me. And I'm glad I chose a local solution. I felt like they understood me better. Getting help with my debt has given me the energy, the headspace, and the time to make my dreams come true. A chance to start again with knowledge, support, and people in your corner. Are you looking for that kind of help? It's okay. Learn more about Leah's story at janesnosworthy.ca. When an impaired driver killed my brother DJ, some people used the A word. They called it an accident, but it wasn't. An accident implies that no one was at fault. But when someone impaired by alcohol and or drugs chooses to drive, they are fully responsible for the crash that can result. So please, for the memory of my brother DJ and the thousands of families whose lives have been shattered by impaired drivers, let's drop the A word. A crash caused by impaired driving is not an accident. And welcome to Out of the Fog. I'm Lynn Hammond. As you know, we're celebrating 20 years of Out of the Fog. And our team dug deep in the vault, back a decade to January 2011. Actor and comedian Kevin Pollack was joined uh, here in our studio by host Aaron Sully. Enjoy. Well, it's a new year and that calls for new resolutions. And well, we don't have any resolutions here at Out of the Fog, but we do have some changes. We have some news to share with all of you tonight. Yes, changes are in effect for Out of the Fog. Peter Walsh has decided to move on, and of course, we wish Peter all the best with his future endeavors. And with our goodbyes and well wishes, we also want to welcome a new face to our show. We are pleased to say that Josh Pennell will be the newest member of our team. And you will meet Josh on Thursday when we sit down and have an interview with him. Yeah, I think Josh is going to fit in uh, very well I around so, here, too. and I think you guys are definitely going to like him. Absolutely. And what's not to like about tonight's show? We have a feature interview with actor and comedian Kevin Pollack. You may not immediately recognize the name, but maybe this will jog your memory. Uh, what is is that I've now worked with a lot of the uh, actors that I've been impersonating in my stand-up all these years. I mean, William Shatner certainly comes to mind. Now, there's two Shatners now. There's uh, the Boston legal Shatner, uh, Dennis Cran. And then there's the uh, Star Trek series, Spock. He's got a ray gun. <laughs> You're going to get to see more of Kevin's impersonations coming up a little later. Now, to give you an idea of his career, uh, Kevin Pollack started out in stand-up comedy, mm -hmm. and uh, he was named one of Comedy Central's top 100 comedians of all time. I mean, that's a pretty big deal. Mm -hmm. And he's even beyond that. He's had roles in huge Hollywood movies. That's right. A Few Good Men, Casino, Usual Suspects. And he also started his own internet-based talk show. It's called Kevin Pollock's Chat Show. And as part of uh, the chat show, he's interviewed, I think, the likes of John Hamm, mm -hmm. award-winning actor from AMC's Mad Men. And, Love him. Yeah, friend mm -hmm. star Matthew Perry and Billy Bob Thornton. And Pollock will next be seen opposite Steve Martin, who is one of my favorites, and Jack Black and Owen Wilson in The Big Year. But you can also catch him tonight as the host of a new show. It's called Million Dollar Money Drop, and it airs on Fox at 10.30. Now, this is a, it's a game show, and yeah. uh, it's from the creators of Deal or No Deal that, uh, so they give a team one million in cold hard cash, and in order to keep the cash, the contestants have to answer seven multiple choice questions. It sounds easy, but I, yeah. I think it's probably harder than it sounds. Yeah, probably. You're probably right about that. Well, stay tuned, because Kevin Pollack is up right after this. <laughs> This is Rogers TV. Gather your family and friends and join the Zuma players for a half hour of the greatest songs ever written. Unforgettable. Why it's almost like being in love. Clang, clang, clang went the trolley. What's your favorite song? Well, you'll probably hear it performed on your all-time classic hit parade.
You're watching Rogers TV St. John's. Kevin Pollack has been in show business almost as long as I've been on the planet. Over the past 20 years, he has been in more than 60 movies, a whole lot of TV shows, including guest spots on HBO's Entourage and his own hour-long comedy specials. And he is now hosting a new game show on Fox. He's been a very busy man, and we were lucky enough to sit down with him for a chat when he popped by our studio a little while ago when he was performing at Yuck Yucks. Here's Aaron with Kevin Pollack. Thanks so much. Well, Kevin, welcome to the show. It's great to have you. Oh, my pleasure. Thanks very much. Now, you have been performing since you were 10 years old. Did yes. you start, uh, I guess, stand-up comedy in front of your family? That is where it started, yes. My uh, mom brought home Bill Cosby's first album, and I was mesmerized by not only the guy talking from the stereo, which back then was a piece of furniture, compared to the little nano oh, yeah. that's changed, um, and then also seeing my parents laughing uncontrollably at this guy talking from the stereo was as unnerving as seeing them openly crying. And, you know, it was strange to see them laughing like that. And so when no one was around, I wanted to be that guy. Uh, it made sense looking back on it. So then I would sort of memorize the album when no one was around and then started lip syncing it. Without knowing what lip syncing was, I just thought I was playing. Uh, so I eventually was caught by my mom doing this, and she said, you have to do that for the family at uh, some big dinner, whatever was coming up. So sure enough, that's where I debuted, was on the brick fireplace. You were set up with your stage. Yes, and I lip-synced Bill Cosby's uh, Noah in the Ark routine from his first album, and the star was born. <laughs> Did you grow up in a big family? Um, well, the big family in the sense that there were lots of cousins uh, that were at these family gatherings year in, year out, but there were only four of us, mom and dad and my brother who's two years old. And becoming a, you know, a comedian and actor, uh, is this something that you've always wanted to do? You know, when you said you, you know, watched the Bill Cosby and you would perform that, but is that, was that like your calling? Like you just realized, like, I was this very is lucky. what I want to do for life. Yeah, I was very lucky to have that calling at such an early age because there was never a moment from 10 years old that I stopped and pondered what I might do with my life. It was a crystal clear path from the very beginning and hasn't really wavered. I, I of course, had day jobs in my uh, youth before people decided I was worthy of payment for my comedy. Um, and I'm glad I did. you started performing when you were 20 is when you... Yeah, I mean, I started doing nightclubs when I was 18. Um, and then sort of decided to call myself a professional when I was around 20 because I was making more of a, a living doing it. Did you have a mentor along the way, or was this something that you kind of naturally learned I on your own? a few. I mean, I had people that I admired from a distance, like Bill Cosby and, and others, uh, Albert Brooks and Woody Allen and, and all sorts. Um, but in terms of mentors, people that I interacted with, there were a few guys where I started out in San Francisco who uh, had been around, uh, one in particular, I remember uh, him saying, after watching me perform, he said, you know, your stage presence is, is unbelievable. You're so natural on stage. When your material catches up to that, <laughs> that, that guy on stage, you're going to be a, a power to be reckoned with. And I knew what he was saying, of course. I needed to write an act um, and not just be comfortable. Uh, and then I also started out around the same time as Dana Carvey. And um, so he was a friend and a mentor, whether he knew it or not. Uh, we, we learned a lot at the same time. And it was good to have uh, someone going through it as well, to, you know. Um, Robin Williams had come from the same sort of era of stand-up comedians in San Francisco. Um, so he was a mentor, for sure. Do you ever get nervous? Like, you know, you hear some people, they get the butterflies, or, yeah. you know, they, uh, they do certain rituals before they go I don't know air. what that feels like, ever. I mean, I, I remember doing The Tonight Show with Johnny Carson the first few times, and it, but it, it wasn't a sense of nervous, nervousness as much as it was excitement. I felt like a uh, Christmas morning, a sort of excitement, not anxious or afraid or it was just 
I'm so happy this is happening, kind of thing. What is it that you love about being, a, I guess, a comedian or a performer in general? What is it about it that... That, that you love, that really... Well, first of all, um, I would say making a living at what you love doing, um, I believe the statistic is less than 1% of the population of mankind and womankind. Um, less than 1% makes a living at doing something they love. So that alone is, has been a life of uh, gratitude and fulfillment. Um, that year in, year out, I look back on, you know, wow, I, I actually paid all those bills. <laughs> um, so, you know, sometimes we'll, I'll be on vacation with my girlfriend and think, wow, telling jokes paid for this. That's ridiculous. That sort of gratitude. Um, and being live on stage is something that uh, I, I, I got away from it a little bit. After A Few Good Men, I crossed that, that fortunate line for any actor where you go from auditioning to getting offers. So I gravitated towards the film and away from stand-up comedy because this childhood fantasy was coming true, basically, of being an actor. Uh, so I did... Well, your first film was Willow. Yeah, and then after A Few Good Men, I did about almost 40 movies in the 90s. <laughs> um, when you think back, I mean, that's, you know, over 50. We're now 50, in the 60s. In the 60s, yeah. over 60 I know. films. It's, when you, and when three you of them that. really good. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> do you ever, uh, you know, when you think back of, to all of those films, all of those movies, is there one that really sticks out that was your favorite or... Uh, there are a few... Know? There are a few because they, they represented, you know, landmark moments and, and benchmark, watermark, all the marks. Uh, the first one would be Barry Levinson's movie Avalon. Um, I mean, Willow was a great experience, Ron Howard directing, George Lucas producing, but it was kind of a cartoon sort of uh, job to do, to be these little brownies yelling, this way, no, this way. But we shot on a blue screen, and we were superimposed into the film. So it, I wasn't with the other actors that were... I never met Val Kilmer in that film. So it was a bit of a cartoon. It didn't really feel like acting. It was fun, great fun. So Avalon was the first dramatic work. And uh, I didn't know anything really about uh, dramatic acting. That is to say, I had no experience. I came from stand-up comedy. I had no formal training. I'm not terribly proud of that. It just happens to be a fact. I wasn't a big fan of school or teaching when the teachers weren't enthusiastic. I sort of picked that up from school, that the teachers who really loved their job, I learned from, and the ones who didn't, I didn't. And so the idea of going into an acting class uh, never really interests me, because I just remember thinking, shouldn't this actor be working? Why is he teaching? Um, so when I got to Avalon, it was an opportunity to be working with brilliant dramatic actors from the stage and, and films. So the fact that I fit in and no one said, whoa, whoa, what's happening? You, you got to come out and get out of there. The fact that I got away with it was this huge achievement. And then that I got noticed for it and, and other work from it was ridiculous. And because the film was so dramatic, it was like I was stamped overnight, dramatic actor. And my career did this, which wasn't part of the plan at all. And people thought, where did he train in New York? He's, mm -hmm. And I would, would laugh. But it was a weird turn, because suddenly I was getting offers, or, or not offers, but interest, but just for dramatic films, not for comedies. And I was like, I, but I'm trained to be funny, but why can't? <laughs> so that was a, a great moment to be sort of welcomed into movie acting. There's tons more to talk about with actor-comedian Kevin Pollack, like if he was surprised at how his career took off as quick as it did. That's coming up on the other side of this short break.
It all started when I racked up some serious debt. Interest payments were going up, creditors were calling. Jane's and Noseworthy came up with a plan. Knowing that the phone was going to stop ringing and that I was not in this alone was a huge relief. Bankruptcy or a consumer proposal or whatever help you get is not the end. It's just the beginning. A chance to start again with knowledge and support and people in your corner. Are you ready? Get out of debt. It's okay. Learn more about Leah's story at janesnoseworthy.ca. Yep. Okay, I'll be there. Welcome back. Well, we've been in conversation with Kevin Pollack. Now, Kevin is well known as a comedian, but was he surprised when his acting career took off like it did? I didn't expect it, and I wasn't really prepared for it, and I felt like I was cheating um, because I had no formal training, and everyone around me had. So I, I, I wasn't terribly uh, confident that it would last. Then A Few Good Men happened. That would be the other giant moment because then I was sort of brought up to the majors in a sense in baseball terminology from the minor league surrounded by the biggest stars in Jack Nicholson and Tom Cruise and Demi Moore and Kiefer Sutherland and Kevin Bacon it was absurd I really didn't fit in in my mind but they all treated me like an equal from day one Rob Reiner directing out of all the people that you've worked with do you have you know, a, a favorite, or a favorite or two that maybe, you know, that you just really worked well together or that helped you along the way? Well, on A Few Good Men, with all those giant names that I mentioned, there was a character actor named J.T. Walsh. Uh, he's since passed away. But he played the character Markinson in the film for fans of the movie. And he sort of took me under his wing a little bit on the set and because we were talking about the, uh, the subtleties of my performance and then I just felt and Rob Reiner had pointed it out to me he said look Tom's gonna be swinging for the fences to keep up with Jack Demi's probably gonna have to do the same I need you to really just kinda hit one into the gap and bring home a couple of runs you know I'd, in other words tone it down keep it subtle and I found that that was really all I could do in terms of how comfortable and natural I felt in front of the camera, what I really could offer, and to this day, if I have a talent, it is just being believable on, on camera in a scene, being so loose and natural that you don't see the acting. And fortunately, that that's all I can do is enough. And so J.T. Walsh said, you know, it's, there's actually a method of acting called less is more, and people know about it but there's another f next level which is less is more nothing is best if you can do nothing in a scene literally be that calm you will draw people in without even knowing it without even doing anything and uh, I found that to be extremely helpful and then after that it was uh, the usual suspects those are the three Avalon a few good men usual suspects those three major milestones um, that completely changed my life and perspective and appreciation and experiences. Now, you are a man who wear many hats. I mean, you know, comedian, actor, uh, writer, director, producer. You, you kind of really do it all. And one of the things that, one of the latest things, I guess, is your, uh, your the Kevin Pollack chat show. Yeah. Which is an online streaming show. And, uh, I'm just wondering, you know, you get to interview some great people, you know, there's been Matthew Perry, Seth MacFarlane, but what's it like for you? Because you're the one who normally, you're being interviewed, right. but you are the interviewer on this show, yeah. so what's it like being in that other chair? It wasn't something I saw coming, I don't know how many hats I need to wear, it's almost absurd when you lay it out like that, um, why I, I had to <laughs> become the interviewer also. <laughs> It just happened uh, naturally. I went to visit a friend who had a, 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 this great internet company, Mahalo.com. They're sort of like Wikipedia meets Google, search, you know, 
site. And I went to visit him at his offices, and he had this little studio. And I walked in, and I said, what is this? And he said, we do a little show here called This Week in YouTube. And I looked around, and I said, I want to do Charlie Rose with a sense of humor here. I didn't know why I said it. It just came out of me. And he said, how soon can you start? And about four weeks later, I booked a couple of guests, and we just started doing it. We stream live every Sunday. If people go to kevinpollockschatshow.com, you'll see all the archived episodes. We've done about 52 shows, but we started doing two guests per show, so I'm up to about 75 interviews. Academy Award winners, um, great filmmakers, musicians, comedians, uh, a few internet stars. Um, Elon, yep. Elon Musk, who uh, is a CEO and founder of Tesla Motors, the fully electric car. So not just show business people. And um, why did you want to do this, though? Why did you want to be I on that know. other side? I don't know. I really don't know. I, I, I don't know what I was thinking. It's completely taken over my life because I have to do a, a live show every Sunday afternoon now in this little studio in Santa Monica, California. Uh, Craig Ferguson will be on our next show on Sunday, Father's Day, June 20th. Um, I don't know what I was thinking, but I've, I've, it's suddenly become a great joy of mine, and in, and in some weird way, it's, it's slowly becoming my legacy, as we've now, we have a library. Some, somebody pointed out, well, actually, it was Amazon.com who came to us and said, we would like to offer your show as a DVD collection um, and let people do a digital download, a, a video on demand, and this is a, a site that gets 75 million views a, a month, considerably more than Kevin Pollock's chat show .com. So it was like being knighted by the, the homeland, the motherland. And um, that's when we realized we have a library. We hadn't really thought of it in those terms. Um, and what I'm finding online, on the internet, to be honest with you, is the sort of freedom and creative control that I only had as a stand-up comedian. I think that's what's drawing me to it, that I do whatever I want. And I just recently co-wrote and, and directed a, a web series, a comedy web series. Uh, another shout out, if you don't mind, if people go to babblegum.com. That's the Vamped Out. That's, that's the... Uh, you know, the name of the series yeah. is Vamped Out. The premise being um, in a world gone crazy with books, TV shows, and movies featuring far too many beautiful vampires. Imagine if you were a real vampire right now. Now, this whole idea, though, came from a chat with a couple of friends. Uh, my, yeah, my co-writer and I just were at lunch. And my girlfriend and I just, on the way to lunch, passed this billboard for another vampire TV series. And we sat down at lunch complaining to our friend Jason Antoon and Shauna, his uh, fiance. And Jason said, imagine if you were a vampire right now. Seriously who couldn't get hired to be one of these because you're not skinny and tired looking. <laughs> and Jamie, my better half, said, Kevin, that'd be a great bit for your act. And I said, no, that'd be a great web series. I don't know why, again, I wasn't thinking about doing a web series before we sat down. Mm -hmm. when, I, when I usually, in the last 10 years, come up with a great idea, I want to pitch it to a TV network if it's a series, which I've done over the years and, and done many pilots. Um, but, we but just it came out, out as a web series. So anyways, that's how it happened. We just have a short bit of time left, but I just want to ask you, you know, why the web? You have a chat show on the web. You have a, uh, a series it's on the web. It's that creative freedom that didn't exist in traditional media for me. I've been a member of the Writers Guild since 87. I've, I've acted and, and produced TV shows and movies. And uh, it, it's such a collaborative effort, which is great. But at some point, some entity controls it. You answer to someone. Um, and online, I have complete creative freedom and control and ownership. And that is the only thing similar to my stand-up comedy that I've ever experienced that had that sort of uh, importance to it and reward instantly. So without question, that's what's behind me and my efforts online now. And I've suddenly become this internet um, authority. I was just in New York at a huge panel conference where I was hosting this panel on stage in front of all these advertisers and all these internet people. And I'm thinking, how did this happen? In one year, I'm an internet authority. This is ridiculous. Well, it's, it's working. It is. It's the future, and it's here. And you know, by the end of this year, all TVs are going to be made 
with immediate internet access. And I don't mean on a keyboard, I mean the same remote control that pulls up a cable show will be able to pull up uh, a series online. It's, cool. it's, it's here, so. Ever-changing technology. Yes. Yes. Well, listen, thank you so much for coming in. Really appreciate My it. My pleasure. Thank you so much. And folks, we will be right back after this. If you have a comment about this program, we'd love to hear it. Email or call us or send us your feedback through social media. What a great episode by our former host, Aaron Sully. Please join us next time on Out of the Fog. about this program, we'd love to hear it. Email or call us or send us your feedback through social media.